Hi, I'm Dr. Snodgrass. I'm sitting next to Dr. Bush. Hi, guys. And we're at our new home in the Hypospadia Specialty Center in Dallas. We're going to share our screen now, so it'll take one second to show you. This is our new logo for our new place. There we go. All we do here is hypospadia surgery, nothing else, in both boys having first-time repairs and boys having redo repairs. And we thought we would use this occasion to also launch a new series looking at questions that we are commonly asked by other doctors and by parents about hypospadias. We decided to call this new series Hypospadias Mythbusters because sometimes these things that we hear are truly just myths that have been around and people have talked about but there's no truth to them. Uh, sometimes of course they are based in fact and so we thought we would start with some really common phrases or questions that we hear and just go through what the data shows so that every Everyone is as informed as can be possible. And so we thought for the first one, we would start with one of the most common questions that we're asked and which is discussed at various workshops and other medical meetings. Does testosterone therapy help improve the results of hypospadia surgery? Or from the mom standpoint, does my child need testosterone? So, so let's get started. So we're gonna go travel, we're zooming, we're gonna zoom back to the 1950s to the first time that anybody knows of testosterone being used in a boy with hypospadias. And it all goes back to that man with the arrow whose name was Ormond Culp. He was just a general adult urologist. You can see he has an adult patient there in the room with him working at the Mayo Clinic. And one day they brought a patient to him who was a boy who had had unsuccessful hypospadias repair. And he took one look at the penis and said, well, it's too small to have a successful repair. He needs testosterone. Let's grow it bigger and see what happens. So they gave him some testosterone and did a surgery. And fortunately for that child, it worked. But of course he also grew some pubic hair, which was kind of brushed off as an annoyance, but not a real problem. But that really was what started this whole thought that maybe we give kids testosterone uh, for hypospadias, you know, difficult repairs, and we'll see what happens. So soon after that, then there, were, there was a gap of time, and then several studies came out that all didn't look at outcomes from surgery. They just looked at what happens when you give testosterone by injections or by topical ointments to see, well, does it in fact enlarge the penis or not? And, and all the studies agree that yes, it does enlarge the penis in most cases. But then does that, are we really needing that to do the surgery? I mean, we operate on babies and we all surgeons who do this basically wear these magnifying glasses that we call loops. So if we wanna see things bigger, we just put on magnifying glasses. So we wear these every surgery and pretty much every surgeon that operates on children has a pair of these. So we can see the penis magnified, unlike in times past where they didn't really have magnifying loops that they could use. You know, this is something that's readily available. So we see the penis larger without creams and shots. So then the real question comes down to what happens with surgical results? We're not asking the question, do we need to make the penis bigger? We're asking the question, does making the penis bigger using testosterone improve the results of the repair? So here's a big study. This is something that's called a meta-analysis, which means taking several smaller studies and piling all the results together. There's good statistical ways that you can do this, and this is what the authors did. So they took the studies that are out there, compiled all the results, and anything that's around the number one, where that straight up and down line is that you can see, means that it's like flip a coin. There's no difference in the groups. So if over, with over 2,500 patients, they compared boys who didn't get testosterone to the over 500 boys who did get testosterone and looked to see were there any differences in the outcomes. 
and right here, what do you see? It's right there on the number one. There was no difference in terms of were there more complications or less complications in boys with and without testosterone. The results were the same. But if you look at this line, you see that there's a few studies that are on the side that says testosterone helps. So let's look at those. Now, authors decided they were going to do that. And there were three randomized controlled trials. That's the kind of study where they give some folks a treatment and then give other folks no treatment or a sugar pill or whatever the case may be. It really wasn't a blinded study in any of these because they didn't give them blind shots or have them use creams in most of them. So there are already some methodological issues, but regardless, we can take these studies one at a time to show you what they demonstrated. Well, first off, they used this in the first study on boys with mostly distal hypospadias. And what is not clear in the study, there are several surgeons listed as authors, and you see the results that the boys who got testosterone had a 3% complication rate versus 24% in those who didn't get it. And by the way, this is dihydrotestosterone, which is not available in the United States. You We've see tried to study. get it, can't get it. Yeah, it was done in Austria. But you have to wonder, did the same surgeon get 3% in the patients who didn't, who got, excuse me, 3% in the patients who got dihydrotestosterone, and the same surgeon had 24% complications in the patients who didn't get dihydrotestosterone, or were there different surgeons getting different results? Yeah, five times higher rate in complications than what we see with distal hypospadias is a pretty remarkable baseline for you know, complications, the really high number of complications. So there's just lots of questions that we have in terms of who was the surgeons, were they truly blinded, what exactly was going on in this. So that's the first study. Then the next study was a, a study from China where they used oral testosterone. And I remember when I took my board exams, I was asked a question about oral testosterone. And the person who chose to give that next had to deal with the patient developing liver problems from it. So that's not used in the United States. But what's also important here is that these were boys with severe hypospadias, and they had a type of repair which is much less commonly done in the United States because the most recent study from the largest institution in the United States, Where which has it used developed. it, yes, reported that they had 85% complications in their patients with that operation. So you have to look at these outcomes too and say, is there are these results easy for us to believe when they're way better than what the center which popularized this operation reported? And again, is the difference in the results in those who got the testosterone and those who didn't accounted for by the testosterone? That's the key question. And again, it's a form of testosterone that isn't used at all in the United States and, and won't be because of side effects from taking it orally. And so finally, there's the largest of these studies, as you see. And again, we've looked at that paper rather closely and noticed that what the author said was that there was a difference, but when we just checked their statistics, we found there wasn't a difference. I think they just did the math wrong. It's a pretty basic thing that you put into any sort of online calculator, and it showed that there was no difference in the group that got testosterone versus the group that didn't get testosterone, even though the author said that it was. So a little confusing there, too. So since that time, there's been two more randomized controlled trials which have been published, so that we can look at those. A uh, big study in India showed absolutely no difference in the outcomes of the boys who got testosterone and the outcomes that didn't. Um, then there was another study that, uh, again, showed the same thing. No difference in the outcomes for those who got it and those who did not. So at the end of the day, there have been multiple studies that showed absolutely no improvement with testosterone or questionable improvement with forms of testosterone that we don't even use or have available. 
But what about our experience with it? We looked at boys with proximal hypospadias, and we looked specifically at the, a complication in them where the head of the penis comes back open after you've sewn it around the new urinary channel. And we realized it was more common in boys who had a relatively smaller size uh, head of the penis, or glands as we call it, versus those with a bigger one. And so when I saw that data, I thought to myself, well, we can grow it bigger with testosterone and that should take care of the problem. So Dr. Bush and I set up this study and if the, if the, the size, we measured the width in the office and if it met this criteria, then they got preoperative testosterone. But different than other studies, we treated it until the head of the penis grew to a target size. And what the target size meant was that these two groups of patients would end up with the same size of the head of the penis when they came to surgery. So boys that had a smaller one were grown bigger. Boys who already had a bigger one didn't get testosterone. And when they went to the operating room, they were the same size. They all got the same surgery. I did all of the surgery in all of them. So we're thinking, okay, we have solved this problem. We've got two equal groups. The outcomes of surgery should be the same, except they weren't. When I analyzed the data, I called them and I told them, you better sit down because what we found was that even though we grew the penises bigger, we didn't fix the problem with their complications. Those boys still had more complications than the boys who didn't get testosterone. And, and it was a highly statistically significant difference. So the goal of us measuring hundreds of boys' penises in the, in the office and giving testosterone until it you know, was a size that we wanted. The, the goal wasn't just to grow the penis. The goal was to decrease our complications. And we didn't achieve that. Yeah, so literally on the day she called me was the last day we've used testosterone in any patient. And that was in 2012. So we haven't no. used any testosterone in almost a decade. So we, we, as we've said, we can summarize that, that we did manage to grow the head of the penis to the target size but it didn't help. So, so when you put all of this together, where we are right now in this discussion, there's not any published data that's convincingly showing that testosterone helps, and our data also shows that it didn't help. Actually, maybe hurt in some ways. So let's now look at evidence from other places and our data too. And what we find is that there's really no clear evidence that preoperative testosterone improves hypospadias surgery. Yes, it can grow the penis, but that's not the goal. The goal is to improve hypospadias repair and we don't really see that. So another thing we have to point out is that in all those studies and that meta-analysis, most of those were in distal hypospadias, and there are some surgeons in the United States who routinely recommend testosterone for distal hypospadias, but most surgeons who use it, use it for proximal hypospadias. Again, with the idea that they need to grow the penis bigger and that will make results better. We should go a step further with that and say boys with distal hypospadias have sizes of penises that are the same as boys without hypospadias. So it's not that they're growing them to a normal size, they're actually growing them supraphysiologic in terms of distal hypospadias. Boys with proximal hypospadias, a few of them have narrower heads of the penis than boys with distal hypospadias, and you can grow that if you give enough testosterone. And so this you know, was, was the question the that we asked, but we didn't find that it helped. And Dr. Bush has a master's degree in understanding all of this, and she'll be the first one to tell you that these randomized controlled trials they're all published in surgical journals and they would not be accepted in medical journals where, th where there are criteria There's to say. There's minimum checklists that are available and I've tried to push some of our journals to say you have to at least have the authors of these studies go through these minimum checklists because there's major components that are missing or done incorrectly and that hasn't happened yet, maybe one of these days, but 
these studies for sure did not meet minimum criteria. Which means you have to be very careful at taking what they say. Just the fact that they randomize it doesn't mean that what they observe is good, solid medical evidence. And the other thing is that all of them dismissed the complication, said, well, does it do any harm? And they said, well, not really, but well, that's not what we've seen. That's an important issue because it's not physiologic for a boy to have a testosterone surge, except for the first six weeks of life. Boys will go through their own little mini puberty, and then testosterone levels remain almost undetectable until they start their own puberty, usually after the age of 10. But when you give testosterone to the boys, these are some of the things that we've seen happen. So all of these boys are less than 10. They're four, five, six years old, and they have pubic hair like a boy going through puberty would have. And you can see in the case of this child, who's in elementary school, he has like a beard thing down here. So none of that's normal, and all of that was a side effect from testosterone. Well, and not only is it not normal, but these were not transient. I mean, we followed these boys, all of these boys, for several years, and the pubic hair never went away. So they look quite abnormal for young boys as a result of testosterone therapy. We also have parents who have told us that they saw a change in the muscle mass of their little toddlers who were given testosterone. Well, like this boy, look at his big chin and everything. And some of them even had kind of rage temper tantrum issues. And of course, these are known side effects in adult men who take testosterone or dihydrotestosterone, those sorts of derivatives. So of course, you can imagine that there are going to be these kinds of side effects that happen when you use doses that are not normal physiologic doses in children as well. So that was all specific to hypospadias. Now let's even broaden things more and say, what does testosterone do to wound healing in general? So there are some actually really good review articles that go through all of the literature looking at human studies where they made wounds in men versus women or men of different ages and measured testosterone levels in animal studies where they castrated mice and then gave them testosterone or didn't and look at the wounds in those. And what you find is that there is no good data that increasing testosterone levels above normal improves wound healing in one review article. And if we move to another review article, we actually find that most evidence suggests that androgens like testosterone and dihydrotestosterone actually have a negative effect on wound repair. And some of those even found an increased tendency for having extra thick scars. And that's a big problem when it comes to penis skin. When the skin scars and becomes thickened, it's very difficult to work with. And we have seen that time after time after time. So we have in our database whether a patient had testosterone or not. And every time that she has analyzed it, we keep seeing testosterone emerge as a problem that seems to relate to increasing complications, which fits all of this other information. So the myth is testosterone improves hypospadias repair. What did we find? The myth is busted. busted. It's not true. We can't find any data to support its use on a regular basis. If people are using it, we hope that it's done in a well-designed clinical trial. Well, no, don't even say that. Nobody is doing Nobody's that. Nobody's doing it. So yet the that we answer know to of. your question: If you've been advised to give testosterone, if you're a surgeon and you're wondering if you should give it, there is no information that says that you should, and there are plenty of reasons to say you should. So we hope that helps you. We hope you enjoyed our first edition of MythBusters and be looking, we'll be adding some more in the near future. Thanks for your attention.